So this is the book that I'm doing for my book club right now. And I wanted to read a few passages from the chapter titled Sex Between Patient and Therapist. I'm going to give you like three pages and some passages. Hold on. Okay, so this first part that I'm reading is not on this page, but the page before. The sentence before says, sex between private female patients and their male psychotherapist is probably no more common or uncommon in occurrence than is sex between a female secretary or housekeeper and her male employer. From a financial point of view, the therapist and not his patient is the employee. So you are paying your employee. Psychologically, however, the female is as much, if not more, dependent, I mean, a dependent suppl supplicant here as she is elsewhere. Both instances generally involve an older male figure and a young female figure. The male transmits unconscious signals of power, love, wisdom, and protection, signals to which the female has been conditioned to respond automatically. Such a transaction between a patient and a therapist, euphemistically termed seduction or part of the treatment process, is legally a form of grape and psychologically a form of the I word. I'm not sure if I can say that. The sine qua of the sine qua non of feminine identity in patriarchal society is a violation of the I word taboo, i.e., the initial and continued preference for daddy, followed by the approved following falling in love with and or marrying of powerful father figures. The fact of the matter is that sexually seduct seductive or assaultive therapists are quite ordinary in their ethical failure, despite their occasional pretenses of being radicals whom society crucifies. They are not very radical. I'm only pointing this out because they are, it's not like they have a look or anything. They are not very radical. They do not perceive or challenge basic assumptions or social behaviors, so they do not stand out. For example, they are generally anti-homosexual and anti-lesbian. So you can read the majority of this, but that's the whole point. They are not, they don't stand out. They are just normal. This part at the bottom is very troublesome. Dahlberg, in his presentation of nine cases of the patient therapist's sexual contact, draws a composite portrait of the seductive therapist as always over 40, from 10 to 25 years older than the patient, always a man, and with one exception of the homosexual, the patient is always a young female. These are power dynamics that sometimes play out in other forms of um, relationships, but this is definitely egregious. Watch out for these types.